So most engineers, electricians, technicians, starting a controls business, go straight in looking for projects. So like big installs, flashy jobs, turnkey systems. And the truth is for businesses starting out, the fastest way to build trust and recurring cash flow is starting with service and maintenance work. But how do you go about getting your first service and maintenance contract? Now, hopefully you've got the technical skills and you're confident in your ability to understand electrical control systems, read schematics and diagnose and fault finding. So most new business owners would be thinking, I've got the skills, I've got a laptop, I'm a bit of a fucking legend, let's get some projects through the door, shall we? So you might be thinking, right, let's start tendering for projects. Now, even if you know how to find tenders, what the right application process looks like and how to increase your chances of actually winning them. This whole process takes a lot of time, unpaid. It's incredibly admin heavy. And the reality is if you're brand new, there's a low chance of even being the successful contractor because you have no track record, no references, so the risk to the main contractor or client is too big. Even if you are the cheapest, they would rather go with a more expensive but proven contractor. And a guy that I used to work for back in the day, running a multi-million pound smart home and BMS business, said that he would never bother tendering for work unless he knew he had 80% chance or more of being the successful contractor. So the learning that I took from that was, if you're a small business, and he had like five to 10 people, if you're a small business, like don't even bother tendering for projects. Like what is the point? You could be putting your time, energy, resources, money into other things to, that are more successful at generating new projects. And I think this is why most new engineers and electricians starting businesses in controls, automation, BMS, struggle to get going in this industry. And sadly, and I've, I've seen this happen time and time again when I worked at Loxon, the vast majority go back to doing the standard work that they were hoping to get away from. Now, this isn't because they're bad engineers, but because they're trying to sell trust before they've actually even earned it. Now, here's the thing. If you are brand new with no real track record or portfolio or of delivering big projects, so social proof ultimately, how do you build trust and relationships with clients where you do get the opportunities to do project work without having to go through the tendering process or quoting against other contractors? because like, that's what you want. You don't want to go through that tendering process. And ideally, you want to separate yourself from other contractors where you're not competing and, and quoting. Like I'm sure we all know, or at least electricians know what that's like at the moment, the state of the industry competing against every, everyone and it just becomes a race to the bottom. Now, the answer to that question is through time on site with the client, providing good service, maintaining their ex existing equipment and reliably fixing their systems when they do break down. And so what does this do? It shows them that you're capable, professional, reliable, and most likely capable of delivering higher value project work. And you see for the client, you providing service maintenance breakdown work is actually quite low risk for them. Like it's not huge amounts of money invested, you know, at risk. It doesn't involve any major changes to their the machinery, equipment, or infrastructure. So it's actually the easiest way for a client to say yes to you as a person, as a business, at the start of the, of the relationship. So a couple of examples might be that you provide quarterly servicing of all of their equipment and machinery, you know, depending on what equipment or machinery that is, you could revise or create new documentation or schematics. Like I'm sure we've all been there where you get on site, you open up a control panel and there's just no documentation, no schematics. 
that can cause real problems. And certainly if it doesn't cause major problems, it can cause a lot of delays for engineers when they are on site trying to fault find and rectify systems. If there's no documentation, no schematics, or at least it's not updated, then it just takes engineers far longer. So you could offer that as a service and, and position it that way, you know, of being a benefit to the client. You could also provide breakdown cover, you know, and you can decide on like the, the terms of that, but like you could provide eight hour response. You know, so if they have a breakdown, you respond and you get to site within eight hours of them cooling in that breakdown. Now, here's what tends to happen next. Once you've got that first maintenance contract or you've done a few reactive breakdowns, you start to see opportunities elsewhere. Because you're gonna be on site, you're gonna notice legacy panels that need refurbishment, you're gonna see outdated controls that could be upgraded or like I've just mentioned, you could see like no documentation and also systems that could benefit from optimization. So you're, you're on site, you're seeing things as they are. And this is where the natural progression path comes in. So the first step is service, maintenance, and breakdowns, where you are on site solving problems, learning about their systems, and ultimately building trust. This also gives you recurring predictable income and consistent site access as well. If you're fairly new, you're getting familiar and more comfortable around, uh, around machines. And you're also there seeing the opportunities to make upsells, cross-sells, you know, as and when they present themselves, and also making recommendations and also making optimizations. So there's lots and lots of opportunities from just getting your foot in the door, providing service maintenance and breakdown. So you've started doing that. Now the, the second step is now, based on perhaps some of these recommendations, or perhaps now the client trusts you and sees that you're capable, reliable, and competent, then refurbishment work comes in, modification work comes in. You know, because if this panel is outdated or isn't working as it should, then you can potentially recommend that they upgrade it or refurb it, or they might suggest it, or maybe there's, there's a pump that's failing or needs replacing or a sensor that's been broken. Like all these little projects where there's replacement work and modification work that comes in, you can actually do that with the physical hardware, but also you can you can start improving their documentation, their designs, as I mentioned earlier, that's gonna make things better for them overall and other engineers and operators potentially on site. You can start providing design work for them as well. So small, these are like small, small little mini projects, but it's not you trading your time for money. It's you actually adding a little bit of margin on top of you know, the hardware that you're selling. Now this is where it gets good. So this is now the third step where you start gaining opportunities to do full on new projects. So once you've proven yourself, you're gonna be first in line if they ever need to do full rip out or upgrades, or perhaps they're installing a new line in their in their workshop, in their in their factory. And because you've already established this trust, you've proven yourself, you know, why would they bother going elsewhere, finding other contractors? Why would they go putting it out to tender? They'd just come straight to you because they know that you can deliver. So this is ultimately how you can go from, you know, kind of starting a new business. And as I said, hopefully you've got the skills and knowledge, the understanding in controls before you start doing this. I was your, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to do very well here. But this is how you go from kind of not really having an established business, not having done any projects, get your foot in the door, start getting comfortable with stuff, start proving to people that you know what you're doing, that builds up to where you want to get to delivering full-on projects, high-value projects where you can make really good margin. And actually, even off just doing the breakdown stuff and the service stuff, you can still, in a lot of cases, double your, your day rate. So you can, say you're a standard electrician charging 250, 300 quid a day, you can easily double that. You know, 500, 600, 700, even 800 quid a day. And in some places like London, like a thousand pound a day. Maybe not for service and maintenance work, actually. That's probably more commissioning stuff. But certainly 500, 600, 700 quid a day.
And this approach, if you do it in this order, every client becomes long term and it's not just like a one off transaction. So, this like, recurring revenue with these service and maintenance contracts, with like as soon as upgrades or new projects need to come in, you're there. The relationship's already established. There's no cost to acquire new clients. You've already acquired that client. You're just doing a really good job for them. They want to stay with you. So it's just like, it's ex it's extremely profitable. You don't have to put any money into marketing. It's, trust me, it's a really, really good business model. Now, I was having a conversation with a guy the other day who's doing similar sort of stuff. Well, he's doing some service and maintenance work just from like a standard electrical perspective. And he he was actually missing out on controls, BMS, service and maintenance contracts because he didn't have the skill set. But this was like what he wanted to learn and what he, what he wanted to get into because rather than charging like 300 quid a day, he was able to charge 700 quid a day and able to get exclusive contracts with these people whereby they set up like a a six month or yearly contract, they pay them X amount and they go in a couple of times a year with a handful of like already prepaid breakdowns that they go into this site and, and they fix stuff. But the client has to exclusively go to them. So if there's any additional breakdowns that like are in addition to the pool that they give, you know, as part of this contract, the client has to go to them. And actually the client would want to go to them because they know the system, they know the site, it's, it's not gonna take engineer to get up to speed. It's not gonna take long for the engineer to get up to speed as a new engineer would because they already know the site, they already know the systems. Maybe they've even created documentations that they're familiar with. So it's actually in the client's best interest, interest to stay exclusive with this contractor for, for those reasons. So this was exactly the strategy that we discussed with, with this electrical contractor to firstly learn the technical skill set in controls and BMS, but then employ this business model. Get your foot in the door, not, no longer having to miss out and pass up on these control and BMS service and maintenance contracts, be able to confidently take them on and then progress up to these small modification projects and then full on refurb and new projects when when they present themselves. So if I was new, how would I go about doing this you know, from, from the start? So what I'd recommend is firstly, like make a list of a hundred local sites, you know, offices, schools, hotels, warehouses, anywhere where there's controls, automation, BMS, HVAC plant, you know, any of these like generally speaking commercial sites. And then I would start reaching out to them. Um, with a free or most likely a low cost controls audit or system health check, if you like, like just just keep it pretty simple. But this is just your way to get your foot in the door, whereby you go in there, you you review their existing setup, schematic sensors, controls, documentation, the state of things, making sure that they're they're working okay, checking if things are in hand or auto, and just kind of give them an overview of the state of their current system because most people most clients most you know operators facility management they don't really know what's going on and it, you, things have usually been the way they are for years and years without being changed or modified and a lot of original controls or BMS companies, they want to do the project, but then they don't want to provide the service and maintenance afterwards because the, the project work is more profitable. But for a very small business, like one man band or guy with a few engineers, this is, this is, this is profitable. You know, if you can charge 700 quid a day, this is great as a starting point and then develop into these projects. So you're on site, you're doing this review and you just document everything. You know, you show up, you be professional, you give value um, if they're there with you, um, but you document all of your findings and you report small issues that could be fixed first and obviously communicate that well. You could even with, with some of the small easy things, you can actually just fix them there and then on site. You're over delivering, providing value, building that trust, establishing that relationship, which then obviously leads into contracts and more work and, you know, 
if there are things that you can improve there that need more time, then you can do that. Or you can say, look, if you want me to do this every every six months and you want me as your person, if something goes wrong, like I'm here, I'm available, let's get a contract set up. Now, in terms of pricing, like, again, just don't overcomplicate things. It's pretty self-explanatory. You could offer quarterly site visits with reports. So you just charge yourself out, I don't know, 500 quid every quarter. So you might do 2K, for a yearly contract with maybe a bit of a markup, maybe say two and a half K, three K, but you're providing that. But then you're also there available if they have any breakdowns. Again, you're the first person that they call. Maybe you could provide eight hour response breakdown cover. Uh, again, you just have to price this to what makes sense. There's all these different angles that you could go down. Um, but yeah, just offer maybe like a few packages, a few options. Make sure that it's clear what the client gets and how you work. But ultimately, you just want to be at top of mind. As soon as something goes wrong, you're the first person that they think of and that you're there on site fairly regularly. Like if you can get in there every quarter, showing your face, reminding them that you are the guy when it comes to these things. So when problems do happen, they come to you. But also you're keeping checks on their systems throughout the year so if improvements do need to be made you know you're there to make those suggestions and like if you're in this kind of position you're looking to get started the two points that we just discussed like the the pricing the strategy the business model like even the technical this is exactly what we're doing with our clients at the moment you know helping them with this within our program control system specialist if you're interested there's a link in the description where you can learn more now to summarize what you want to do is this you want to start small you want to solve problems earn trust and then scale and this is how you build a sustainable profitable controls and BMS business, not by chasing projects from day one, but by becoming the person that your clients rely on to keep everything running. Because once they trust you with that, they'll trust you with everything else like the bigger project. Hope this video was helpful. See you on the next one.